Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. On this week's episode, I'm going to talk to you about Prime Trust. Ay ay ay, what a mess that has become. Um, then also, light at the end of the tunnel with business, hopefully. Um, talking about what that's like as a business owner. Um, and then, of all things, the Titanic. I know it's in the um, news and, you know, everybody's sick of hearing about it for all the different reasons. Um, but I just, it, <laughs> some really bizarre timing um, with my professional life. Uh, so I'll have to tell you guys about that uh, and how the Titanic fits in, how the Titanic fits into that. So anyways, I'll do my best. I'm recording differently again. I'm doing it via QuickTime. Um, hopefully, I think this will make for, I think this makes for better audio. I think the video is the same, um, but hoping if you guys notice a significant difference or think the audio sucks, but I also noticed I need to talk closer and into the mic more. Um, so working on that, I apologize. You would think this is the 107th episode. You'd think I'd get it by now, but who knows? Maybe by the 207th, I'll have it figured out. Um, before we go any further, I want to shout out to the Bitbox O2 Harder Wallet from Shift. Well, bloop, caught myself there. From Bitbox.Swiss. That's right. That is their branding now. Bitbox Swiss. Bitbox, they're sticking with the Bitbox because, you know, like many companies that were in uh, Bitcoin back whenever uh, block size wars and all that was happening, people had crypto in their name and now they're Bitbox. Because they were like, uh, that crypto stuff is disgusting. Let's stick with what we know. And uh, so you can get a Bitbox O2 hardware wallet from Bitbox. Go to bitbox.swiss and you'll be it, slash Bitcoin Made Simple and use the promo code Bitcoin Made Simple to get 5% off. And you will be very, very happy that you did that considering all the things that are going on with Prime Thrust as Magoo said, and all those other things. Um, and then also go to upstreamdata.ca to get all your Bitcoin mining stuff. Um, as you guys know, I'm getting into Bitcoin mining. Well, I mean, I do mine Bitcoin, but I'm getting into it in a more a, a bigger way with some off-grid sites. Um, so 100% looking forward to uh to working more and more with upstream data so go to upstreamdata.ca and then also movies plus uh of the millions of you that have used the promo code cory c-o-r-y i'm at mymoviesplus.com uh, you get one year for 24 bucks so two dollars a month and you get a ton of great content i will i'll just tip you off on one that you should watch um given that you're a bitcoiner you probably uh, are someone that is frustrated by things such as fake news and hoaxes and everything that goes on. So you should go on and watch the movie Hoaxed on uh, Movies Plus. It's uh, done by produced by Mike Cernovich, um, if you're familiar with him. Uh, and yeah, he's in the conservative realm, but um, but it's really a, a head-on approach of how corrupt the corporate media is so you can watch it with promo code cory c-o-r-y and you'll get a whole year for 24 bucks you can watch that and all the other stuff that we have going on and coming your way thousands of titles at this point um, and we're just looking to add aggressively anyways on the prime trust so um if you're looking to me to have all the details and really have a thorough, like, laid out, detailed explanation of what's going on, this is not the place. That's not what you guys come here for, though. <laughs> I think at this point we know that. Um, but Prime Trust has lost $80 million worth of their customers' money. Um, so if you don't know what Prime Trust was... All these exchanges, um, I don't know. I don't know for certain which ones were using Prime Trust, but I know that 
Swan was one of them. Uh, Strike was one of them. Um, both have removed their coins from Prime Trust and moved them to a different company. Um, get into that a little bit more. But uh, honestly, this could not be a better advertisement for getting a BitBox. This, like, everything that's been going on in this bear market sounds like it was set up as one huge ad read for why you needed to take self-custody. Um, but I think is as bad as that is because of the way it's happened, um, I think it's an important lesson that we've all learned. Um, because I've mentioned before that I, I think, I don't think that the average person is going to be able to custody their own Bitcoin and they will own it through like different proxies or what have you, an ETF or, you know, whatever micro strategy stock, or maybe they own it on a place where they can own it, but and enjoy the ups and downs, but they can't. Um, self-custody it, you know, a place like uh, PayPal or something like that. Well, um, if you're in Bitcoin at this point, then you're in it early enough to figure out self-custody. Um, you should be self-custodying your assets. You should be doing it. And if you're here this early, you have the opportunity to. Um, but anyways, getting into the Prime Trust thing. So apparently Prime Trust, who holds and custodies um, Bitcoin for exchanges, apparently they misplaced, uh, I don't know what if it was on the transition to a new wallet or what have you. Doesn't, the details don't really matter. What matters is that they hold... $150 million worth of clients' assets. Problem is, they only have $70 million. Uh-oh. Um, apparently, they've known this for a while and just been operating as if uh, as if this didn't exist, as if this problem didn't exist. Um, I think this one's going to make SBF and some of the others look small in comparison. Um, so I don't know if, you know, I saw Swan and Strike had some of their assets there and they moved to a different one. And I don't know if they were just going playing a hunch. I don't know. But, um, good on them to do that. Now the danger is, and you know, I see people talking about clawbacks and, so what a clawback would be would be let's say prime trust goes belly up into bankruptcy um in that bankruptcy situation anything they i think it's and don't quote me on this but something like anything that they sold within the last 90 days potentially could be taken back by the bankruptcy court as an asset that they owned, knowing that they were going to be bankrupt or blah, blah, blah. Something like that. So, I don't know what that means for Swan. I don't know what that means for Strike. I hope that means that they're, they're going to be fine. I do hope, I mean, obviously, I hope they're going to be fine. But, um, that we don't know there's no precedent for this uh so and we certainly live currently in unprecedented times uh if anyone's sick of hearing that i am but it's true um these are unprecedented times and i don't know where this goes so if you had your coins anywhere, I would highly recommend you get them off. Move them to a Bitbox O2 hardware wallet and um, get them there ASAP as possible because 
Now, the, the tricky question is, like, what I don't know is, let's say you owned, this is hypothetical. So, you know, Corey and Jack Maulers, if Corey Clipston and Jack Maulers, everybody at those swan and strike, just playing devil's advocate here and doing a hypothetical. So hypothetically, if you had Bitcoin on one of those exchanges and you transferred it to your wallet, um, I would think that there's a potential that if they get if they get clawbacks to the to them, and they're going to have to come get the funds that you withdrew. I, I have no idea. I'm just saying, if you're someone that used one of those any cust any company that had prime trust involved i would do a thorough search into what could happen to the bitcoin that you removed from there um and and how to protect it um i don't know if that means you know selling it on that platform and then you know going and buying it somewhere else um i don't know <sighs> But I'm starting to think, well, I've said this before, I'm not starting. So I've been thinking it for a while, but this keeps going back to, I think that a Bitcoin miner is like the only way to to stack Bitcoin in the future. Um, it's probably going to be the only way that you can do it self-custody eventually. Um, but like right now, like what do you, like what a mess um cuz swan swan and i mean i don't know their ins and outs but swan and strike are both you know like bitcoiner run companies you know here for the good of bitcoin the good of their shareholders etc um but um, yeah, they're good companies. Um, it's a bad situation no, through no fault of their own. Um, but I just wonder, it's like, I don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable right now buying Bitcoin off of an exchange. Um, so yeah, to me, you know, get it in, like you can get a miner right now, upstream data. I don't, I haven't looked at upstream's prices, but I know that you can get a plus 100, you know, over 100 terahash miner for like, uh, like I've seen them in the 2000s, which yes, if you've been listening long enough, I bought mine <laughs> for a lot more. Um, but it, I, I would jump on this. I would jump all over this uh, opportunity because let's just say, like I was saying, you know, I know they're Bitcoin or companies and hopefully everything works out. But if you're in this for the long haul and if you're a Bitcoiner, you probably are. Maybe in your best interest to have your own DCA machine. That's what I'm going to start calling mine is just a DCA machine. I'm just going to keep dollar cost averaging through the miners. Um, because I mean, even if you're playing, if you're paying retail electricity rates right now, you're at least breaking even, um, making a moderate profit. I mean, depends. I don't know if you live in Canada, you probably won't be, but um, it won't take long for the price to rip. Here's the other thing I've learned is you don't want to look at the price like right now, because all winter long I was looking at the price of Bitcoin, like the the profitability of the mining happening through the winter. And I was like, Oh my God, like this thing is losing money every day. Um, and now that Bitcoin has rebounded, like, Oh, it hasn't, it wasn't losing money. If you were looking at the fiat units at that moment, yes, it was losing money, but we all know where this is going. So if you're in this for the long haul, I'd strongly recommend that you, buy a miner while you can for 
200, $2,000 or whatever and just plug it in and have it set to send it to your wallet. And when it gets sent to your wallet, make sure it's a Bitbox O2 hardware wallet. But whatever wallet you use, um, self-custody that and get it. <laughs> like, that's the beauty of it. Everybody has to become their own exchange. Maybe that's the future. Maybe the future is that we're all our own exchanges. Um, and, you know, if you want to really actually own Bitcoin, um, you got to own it that way. The downside is that if when you want to use it, um, it will then get circulated and get vacuumed up into the system that will probably exist where everybody's Bitcoin is centrally located on a select servers um and that's where i don't know maybe that's not where it's going i don't know that sounds a little doom and gloomy i don't think it's gonna be i think there's gonna be enough technological innovations between now and then between now and bitcoin mass adoption which maybe this makes a case as to why you don't want mass adoption to happen so quickly because if it does then i don't know what let's just say 10 percent of the people in the world are Bitcoiners. That's a large number. It's not that many. But um, let's say it switches over to mass adoption within this decade. I would think that it would move so fast that there wouldn't be the learning curve. of There wouldn't be enough runway to get people over, to get the technology up to a point. And by technology, I don't mean Bitcoin, the technology. I mean the ser the, the services, the ability for people to self-custody simply, um, to operate their own node, things of that nature, and to transact it. That, I don't know if it could happen that quickly. And I think what, re what the result could be, and this is a, very not well thought out thesis, by the way. This is a, you're getting the thoughts that are coming out of my brain as I'm speaking them thesis. Um, so that's how researched it is. So it's not a very well thought out thesis. It's not very um, fleshed out. But I'm just sitting here thinking we don't have enough time if it happens that quickly, a lot of people get stuck on the outside using Bitcoin on exchanges only. Um, and so, you know, yeah, the technology needs to grow. The, the technology surrounding Bitcoin needs to grow. The adoption needs to grow that way. It needs to push in the right direction and get things, um, get things going over a longer period of time just so because if if um, okay so i'm all over the place here because i'm getting blown up with text messages right now and that's i hate when that happens i should put my phone away um so when you have let's say like i said 10 percent, let's say 10 percent of the world is a bitcoiner and they know how to self-custody everything like that and we have warp speed to mass adoption over the next handful of years I would think at most 20% of the people in the world would be self-custodying their Bitcoin and using that way, using it that way. And you might think, well, I'm part of the 20%, so it doesn't matter. Um, but it does, because like I said, if you, in my well thought out instant thesis, if 20%, if, if it is a world, if it's the world reserve currency, but most of it keeps getting sucked up by these platforms that are letting people use it, the other 80%. Then in that situation, you would think eventually that the rest of all of the Bitcoin would land there. And when that happens, it would probably just be not a good situation. Could be game over. So I think what we need to do is get as many people as we can into self-custody and having their own DCA machine before it becomes mass adopted because uh, it just 
if we want what's best. If you want number go up, then I guess you want mass adoption now. But really, to me, I would trade having number go up to 60. If it went up to $60 million a coin this decade, I would not be, I would not be ready. I would, you know, it would be good financially for me at the moment. Um, but it wouldn't be good for Bitcoin in the long run or humanity in the long run. So that's my thesis. Um, so that's why you should get a DCA machine and get that DCA running. Um, light at the end of the tunnel regarding Movies Plus. Um, and we're going in the right direction. I've said that multiple times to you guys, but... Um, it's it's close. It's close to happening. Uh, just just got to keep pushing. So it's nice every once in a while. Like I I have my head down in the sand and I'm just plugging away, working and working and working and and then you kind of pull up for a second and go, oh, okay, we're not doing so bad. Um, and I hope that's what you're doing with Bitcoin because during this bear market really you should just be plugging away working and working and working and moving towards getting your um getting your stack bigger not looking at what the fiat value is and then when we come up for air here in the next bull run you're gonna be like oh okay thank god i was i had my dca machine running um thank god i listened to Corey back then this is not financial advice, by the way. And that is for this episode and everyone going forward or in the past. Um, if you're taking financial advice from a filmmaker, you have made a poor decision. You have made a series of unfortunate decisions. Um, also, I mentioned before I wrap up uh, the Titanic. Um, so we all know the submersible story. I'm not going to rehash that. But um, this is unbelievably ironic so for those of you that don't know um i'm actually a producer on a film about the titan sinking of the titanic called unsinkable so i'll give you the plot uh is a actually when i pull it up and i just read it to you i'll go to the imdb so yeah if you go to imdb um search my name or unsinkable uh, you will find it. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so plot summary. On the night of April 14th, 1912, the most famous ship in history, the RMS Titanic, struck an iceberg. Within three hours, she succumbed to her damage, and one of history's most intriguing mysteries was born. The tales of greed, arrogance, conspiracy, heroism, and romance have captivated the world for over a century. What has been largely untold are the days immediately following the disaster. Unsinkable is a live-action, incredible true story of the rushed investigation, political interference, corporate accountability, and the heart-wrenching personal moments of the disaster itself. With fascinating testimony, back-alley investigation, and riveting flashbacks to that fateful night, Unsinkable shines a light on why the Titanic disaster has endured for over 100 years. So, it uh, stars, I give you the Two top names would be Karen Allen, who is uh, of Indiana Jones fame, many other things, but um, and Fiona Dwarf, uh, who is uh, was in the Chucky movies. Her dad was actually Chucky, um, and uh, but it's a I'm a it's a film I'm proud of, uh, very well done, um, and and yeah, the thing that uh is interesting about it is that we have this uh we have this film that we've been working on for years uh like the reason i was excited about the film to begin with right off the bat was that it like it says in the summary there it's about what happens after the sinking so yes we see the titanic the visual effects shots of the titanic being up in all the glory and a lot of water stuff which was very difficult to film um but all of that stuff, uh, we I was like, you know, everything you hear about the Titanic 
you never hear about what happened afterwards. Um, so I was fascinated by the thought of exploring the Titanic, the inquiry and all that kind of stuff um, that I had no idea about until this is 2016, whenever we started working on this. Um, we had a couple delays pre-COVID, then COVID happened and, well, you know, what kind of delay that made it. Um, so that's where, where we're at is that, you know, now literally we just got in our hands the like polished final um like the film is edited cut together we got the color if you don't know what that is they do color correction and they lay in and go into every scene and and do the color in the way that the filmmaker wants it to look and um and yeah it uh <laughs> it it's just it all comes in and we're like the only thing we're doing now is over the next two weeks laying in the sound design which is like all the knocks and, you know, the feet shuffling and every little sound you hear. So long story short, um, yeah, it's unbelievably, like I'm sitting there last week when I see this Titanic story happening, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, we're getting it right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've been talking to the press because obviously there's a little interest there. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I this one, I'll admit, you know, I I own Movies Plus, but I produce this independently of Movies Plus. Um, I mean, like I said, I've been working on it since 2016. So, um, holy crap, uh, it's a long time to be working on a project. Uh, so yeah, seven years, um, and here we are. Uh ready to release it so i'll let you guys know where it where it lands um you know if it gets uh picked up by a different distributor or whatever i'll keep you guys posted um with all that being said oh wait i do want to mention it's also the reason it's it's not just crazy that the titanic's in the news when this happens but the relevance to what happened in the situation there is compared to the titanic you have rich people arrogantly thinking making decisions arrogantly thinking that they were unsinkable or you know it was indestructible um and they cut corners um you know the titanic bruce ismay who's kind of the villain of our movie um even though you kind of really feel bad for the dude who like i mean he just he screwed up big time but you know, couldn't get out of his own way. But, uh, you know, whether it's him, you know, saying we want to, you know, ignore the ice warnings, we're going to, you know, power through and get to New York with like, you know, I think the line was something like it. Just imagine the headlines, you know, Titanic arrives two days early or something. Uh, so that's why they powered through. So hubris. Um, and then we have this submarine that goes down with people that spent $250,000 a pop to go down and see it and um and they cut corners with using a video game controller not even the good one they used the logitech one or like uh, um you know and you, you just more and more is coming out about but it, it's interesting because there will be hearings about this there will be people being held accountable and that's kind of what happened in our movie um and we talk about in our movie is that the plight of the people that was ignored uh back then you know all the women showed up with you know all the poor immigrants the men all died uh and so the women who back then weren't working just the breadwinner that was going to earn the money when they landed in america was gone um and they instantly went into poverty and you'll see in the film like they we have a scene a whole scene where they're just living by the dock. They didn't even know where to go when they got to New York. They were just like, it was like an encampment there. Um, in a similar situation, you know, that the the unfortunate situation with that migrant ship sinking, and nobody gave a crap about that, but everybody gave a crap about who the rich people were that died. 
even the headlines back when the Titanic went down, you know, it was like, who was on board? The Strauss family that owned Macy's, blah, blah, blah. Um, but nobody cared about the immigrants or the poor people that were showing up that had nothing to their name and nobody to earn money for them. So, uh, just interesting how a hundred years later, nothing's changed. So anyways, on that note, get a BitBucks O2 hardware wallet, go to bitbucks.swiss slash Bitcoin made simple and use the promo code Bitcoin made simple to get 5% off. And I will talk to you guys later.